Today's podcast is going to focus on organization strategies for you and your student during the college search. As parents, we get pulled in so many different directions. When you throw in searching for colleges, it's no wonder we feel like our heads are spinning. From the time that your student takes their first standardized test or requests information from a college, you are going to start getting a lot of information. The mail and emails are going to start pouring in. How many times do you think, oh, I'll get to that soon and then forget to follow up? Or that you have so many different files, folders, and accounts that you can't find what you were looking for? You're going to hear about the journey of one of my families that I work with, how that journey took them from feeling overwhelmed and stressed, and how they implemented these organization strategies and had a solid plan. Stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Courtney and I'm the founder of Confused to College Ready. With over 15 years experience as a mental health therapist turned school counselor, I am bringing my experience and expertise to help you navigate the college search experience. My goal is to serve students and their families and unlock the secrets to college searching. Stay tuned. All right, let's get started. So when you add a have that major decision ahead of you, like looking for colleges, and you add that to your already full plate, it can be super intimidating. Today, I'm going to tell you a story about Jasmine. I got a phone call from Jasmine's family as she was going into her junior year. They had files full of papers from their IGP meetings, their graduation plan meetings with counselors, things that they have saved over time, multiple saved Facebook and Instagram posts, different TikTok ideas of the things that they could do. And they just still felt overwhelmed. They didn't have any kind of systems in place to be able to make this any easier. Jasmine's parents, just for some background, her parents worked full time. She also had two younger siblings. So Jasmine and her siblings, like many students, are super involved in different extracurricular activities. The family volunteering and involvement in the community was really important to them. They had a lot on their plates. They knew that they had a significant amount of information to keep track of. And they also felt like they were on overload with all of the different things that they needed to do. So they reached out because they wanted some help with how to keep on top of things and not feeling like they were going to pull their hair out. So what I want you to do is grab a pen and paper and make some notes about the five organization strategies that we came up with. All right, so let's start with number one. And if you listen to episode number 11, our last episode, all about... Um, easy ways to manage your time, we discussed using a planner and a calendar. And so this is going to piggyback on that some. I want you to make sure as you are being organized and as you are looking at managing your time, um, I want you to look at using some kind of family calendar or planner. So this could be digital, it could be paper, it could be something that's annual, monthly, weekly, it can be a combination of all of those things. And like I said, I do go into more detail about this in episode 11. Um, So please make sure that you go back and listen to that episode to hear about some things that we do within my family to be able to manage our time and using that planner and then also to give you some ideas of how you can use that moving forward. The closer that you get to applying to colleges and looking at due dates for things as well as scholarships, um, that planner and knowing what's going on ahead of time is going to be even more critical. And so that you don't miss things in your own personal or work life. So the second thing that I want you to do is have set up an email address that is going to be specific to your student's college search. So then as you are, and this can be as early as freshman year, as you're getting information or you are looking into different programs or summer activities, you can start using that email. This is something that you want to get in the habit of checking often. Email is one of the main ways that colleges are going to try and connect to students. Um, And they're actually going to check for not just are you opening the emails, how long are you opening them, 
Are you actually clicking on links to follow through and get more information? This is called demonstrated interest. So how much interest is your student showing in that particular college? And it is really easy for colleges to pull a report and say, oh, hey, listen, um, you know, Susie, went and looked at this many, you know, she spent one minute on the email versus Sarah that she logged on to the email. She spent time reading through it. We can tell that she went and looked at this link and we actually have some follow-up communication from her on that. So that's one of the things that you have as an option. And if you get in the habit of checking that email, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. The other thing is, if you know that you have that email that's going to be specific, you're not having to sort through multiple college emails in finding through finding those multiple college emails in the rest of the emails that you get. I don't know about you all, but my email gets bogged down. There are a lot of different things. My personal email address, there are a lot of different things that... I get communication on and it can be really easy to miss things. Um, so email, we want to make sure that we have something specific. You also want that to be professional. We don't want it to have something that is going to be inappropriate or um, something that is going to throw up any red flags for the college. So you want it to be super professional. The next thing you want to do in that email account um, and Honestly, what I would suggest, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in one of our future ones, is to set up a Gmail account. And I'll tell you why as we get into our numbers two and three. But you want to set up folders within that email. So some of it might be college specific folders. Some of one of those folders could be a to do or a follow up folder so that you are quickly checking it. You're looking for something and you say, you know what? I need to go back and I need to be able to look at this link that the college sent. And so having a way to be able to track what you need to do, that is going to be super, super important so that you know what to follow up on. And then if there's something that is interesting to you, you want to make sure that you click on the links and are following up on the information from that college. All right. So number three, um, this is a different student that I worked with, but, um, with this particular student, he had come in and he needed a transcript. His college had reached out to him. He was a senior. College had reached out and they said, hey, we don't have your transcript. And so at the school, um, we use Naviance. And I went in and I said, I'm not, I'm not able to do this. You need to go into your Common App and make sure that you have everything set up and ready to go. Well, Mom was the one who had saved the passwords on the computer at home, and Mom was at work. Mom didn't remember the passwords. He had no idea what the passwords were, and it ended up being this huge deal where they were having to log into multiple accounts on different computers and trying to reset passwords and trying to get information. Mom was at work. She was having a hard time. She had gotten pulled out of a meeting. The student wasn't able to go to class. So one of the things that I would encourage you to do is to save um, a profile with your passwords. Now, you can do this in a couple of different ways. One of those might be just a document that everyone can access. The thing that I do to for my saved passwords is I actually use Google Chrome, and I set up a synced profile so that all of my passwords, all of my bookmarks, everything that I am going to use is available on that computer when I log in with that profile and I sync my computer. So whether I'm going to visit my family, whether I have, um, you know, whether I am needing to work on a device at our house that I'm not normally on, all I need to do to access everything that I want to have for my business or for the work that I'm doing with someone, it all is right there. And I don't have to worry about losing those passwords. So I use Google Chrome. And the other thing that is really reassuring for me is that if my computer dies or for some reason something happens, I don't have to worry about what those passwords are and how am I going to remember them because it is all saved there on the cloud and all I have to do is set up that syncing system. So I would encourage you to look into what you might be able to do and how you want to save that profile so that anyone can access it from anywhere. 
And if you set that up with your email address that is directly related to your college search, then you have everything is still in one place and you're going to remember what the email address and password is for that and you're going to have easy access to your documents. So number four is that we're going to look at our files. So with this one, I had talking, I had spoken with, sorry, can't talk today. I had spoken with Jasmine's family um, the year in her sophomore year. We had actually had worked together a little bit before and we had talked about her saving any papers that she wrote for classes or any ideas that she had. She was keeping track of activities that she was involved in, but she was saving those essays and scholarship for um, anything she wrote for class for potential college essays or any kind of scholarship topics so that she could easily repurpose what she had done. So again, we are going to have that super easy email for your specific to your college search. And in Google Drive, this is where you set up your Gmail account. And then in Google Drive, everyone is going to have access to it you're gonna set up different folders. So one of them might be for your college research and reviews. Another folder might be, um, you might have every individual college that you're looking at could have an individual folder for that particular college so that as you are writing your essay and it is something that's specific to that college that it's saved in that college folder or if there are passwords that you need to make sure that you've saved, or other information, um, deadlines, you can have a notes page for every college so that as you talk with admissions officers and you have your frequently asked questions, that you can enter those in those folders. You can have a specific folder for scholarship needs, one for essay information. There are multiple ways and folders that you can set up and some of it is figuring out your own system of what is it that you need, but you're going to be able to set up those folders so that you can easily track and know exactly where you're going. And then it's not going to be intermingled with all of the other things that you might have on Google Drive or in that's saved on your computer. And again, if it's saved on Google Drive, it's in the cloud. And then when you log into a different computer, you can easily access it. So the final thing is going to be our deadlines and dates. With those deadlines and dates, one of what we're going to look at is having a tracker. The biggest thing that you want to make sure that you have is knowledge of those due dates or deadlines. I have had it before where I've gotten a panicked email or phone call, um, and sometimes even in the evenings where... I'm getting an email, Miss Counts, I need you to, you know, can you please get this transcript sent? I'm so sorry. I thought it was taken care of. There's a lot of extra stress on students. There's a lot of extra stress on parents with that. And just wanting to make sure that you have everything done and turned in well ahead of that deadline. Even when a college says that they have a due date of November 1st, you want to make sure that your stuff is in there early so that you can make sure they've received it and you're not going through that last minute panic. One of the other things that you want to do is you are looking at this tracker. So take an Excel spreadsheet. You're going to look at the uh, each college having its area and you're going to look at what is the deadline for the application for the student portion. What are your deadlines for your essays, for letters of recommendation? Do you even need a letter of recommendation? How many, um, how many of those letters do you need? What is going to be your deadline for, um, what is going to be your deadline for any kind of transcripts? Do you need to send test scores? And do those have the same due date as your application portion, or is that considered supplemental? So those are all of the things that you want to make sure that you have laid out so that you're not going to miss anything for any college and you're not going to have that moment of panic. This also is going to help you as you're talking with people who are going to write your letters of recommendation. They're going to need to know at least a couple of weeks in advance and you need to be able to give them that information and those dates and deadlines ahead of time so that they know exactly what to do. Same thing with scholarships. You want to know what are those deadlines and when do you need to make sure that you have things submitted and what is submitted. So as you're using these trackers for all of these dates and deadlines, it's going to help you know what to put on your planner 
and what to have on um, on the schedule so that you can best budget your time and you're not spending an evening staying up until the middle of the night trying to get all of these things taken care of. Once you have your college acceptance back and you know what school you're looking at, you're also going to need to pay attention to any kind of due dates for accepting that admissions office, that admissions offer, um, having any communication that you need to with the admissions office and making sure that any of those down payments or deposits are paid and anything else that's needed so that you can, will be able to proceed and move forward. So let's recap really quickly. So our top five things that are our top five organization strategies are going to be using a planner or calendar making sure that you have a specific email address that is going to be dedicated to the college search, looking at having a synced system for your bookmarks and passwords so that everyone is able to access what you need, having a really solid organization system set up in Google Drive with your files, and then also having some kind of tracking system for those dates and deadlines. During individual coaching and in the course that is going to be coming up, I do go into a lot more detail on file setup, how to compare colleges to figure out what's the best fit for you, the application and data tracker for those deadlines, how to use your planner, how to prioritize time. And then we also have templates that are set up for our students to use in each of these areas. If you haven't listened to our episodes on having positive conversations or on time management, that will be linked um, in the show notes. Please go back because those are also going to have a really important part and they definitely apply to the organization. So if you enjoyed this podcast and it has been helpful, it would mean so much to me if you would leave a review so that other people can find the podcast and also share um, and it, it be beneficial to them. Also, let me know how things are going. Um, please send me an email, a message, and share with me how things are going, what other questions you might have. You also can download my guide on how to start or expand your college search at www.confusedtoready.com forward slash how to start. As always, I am here to serve you and your student. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook at Confused to Ready and download our free guide on how to start or expand your college search at confusedtoready.com forward slash how to start.